acumen? Yeah, I think, you know, you always look for players that have had some sort of adversity in their lives that, you know, and it could be the smallest thing, but it also shows a little bit of their character and uh, how they've worked to overcome things. So it's, it's little backstories on players at uh, the combine here that you like hearing. And But, you know, like I said, uh, that's some of the traits that we really liked about Brian and that uh, – He's just earned everything from, uh, you know, an intern running to get coffee every day to, you know, being part of a, one of the greatest defenses performances in the Super Bowl. And, and now he's a head coach of our organization. Chris, what are some of the examples of the life experiences you're looking for? Is it hardship growing up, hardship in the school, coming back from injury, things like that? Uh, yeah, because it's this is a hard league, you know, and um, it, and we've there's been examples of players in the past that have never had any adversity. They've been the whether it's the five-star player from a you know, white picket fence in ideal life, and then they come to the league and they struggle, and they don't know how to deal with that. And so and not saying that every player should have that, but it's, it's, it does. It helps paint, paint a picture, and it, it gives you an idea of whether the guy has that makeup to um, overcome the challenges he's going to deal with in the, in the NFL. Chris, there's been a lot of talk that this roster is going to have a pretty big makeover this offseason, and essentially if you're a veteran on a big contract, you're, what do you see the roster of 2019 look like? Is it going to be young guys? Is it going to be cheap guys? What do you say? I would say everything is, uh, you know, to take Brian's words on the table. But just uh, we've made some decisions, but we still have a couple weeks to go. But I wouldn't say that anybody is um, definitely going to be cut or not going to be here, et cetera. It's, um, the coaching staff's only been in the building for two and a half weeks, you know, and uh, they've grinded and worked hard to um, learn the roster. We've had uh, great meetings with the coaches about uh, future plans and we're very close, but uh, we're still having a lot of discussions that still need to be had over the next couple of weeks. There's a lot of tension, obviously, it's going to be at quarterback. You know, when do you anticipate making that decision on Ryan and then what's next for you guys? Yeah, no, I think uh, we've had a really good talk uh, last weekend just trying to figure that out and uh, the coaches have done a great job. Uh, Coach O'Shea has been really good, and Coach Caldwell, and talk with Brian and I. So uh, we're getting there, and uh, once we make a decision, you know, uh, organizational-wise, we'll, we'll move forward. Chris, where do things stand with Xavier Howard, and are you confident that he'll be on your roster in 2019? Yes, I'm very confident he'll be there. Uh, Xavier's been in the building, uh, coming back from a little bit of his uh, – just working out, starting to get in shape again after his Pro Bowl, which we don't really call that, you know, working out. But <laughs> but uh, he's doing good. We've uh, just been hanging out around him. He wants to be a Miami Dolphin, and we want him to be a Dolphin. Have you had any uh, discussions with Jawan James Camp? No, not yet. You know, uh, Jawan just got married last weekend, as you know, some of you guys know. So uh, we'll probably engage him some point here after the combine because, you know, at this point he's getting married and so much going on in his mind that uh, we just said uh, we'd meet after the combine. How would you describe the level of interest in possibly having him return? Oh, you know, we drafted him here and um, he's a good young player. Uh, we'd like to have him here and we'll, and we'll see what the market and, and what he's looking for as well. How Chris, important would he be as a, how important would he be as an anchor for the offensive line, especially at that right tackle position? Yeah, no, I mean, it's one less box you'd have to check going out. Uh, but at the end of the day, the organization will do what's best for the Dolphins. And, you know, he's a good guy and he's, he's worked hard. He's uh, been here and he's a good teammate. And, you know, so we'll see what happens. All right, we'll, Chris, take, we'll, we'll take a couple more. Chris, there's been talk that you guys might not want to win this season. Can you tell me on the record? I mean, what is the <laughs> what is the intention? This, I mean, is I it think, to make the playoffs? I, I, I think everyone kind of took Steve's words. The first press going to say with the first one. Uh, out of context because you've been around Steve. He is a <laughs> volatile, very competitive person. So um, we're not trying to lose games. We're, we're going to do what's best. We're going to build. And like we talked about, building the right, going through the process to do what's best for the Dolphins. But no, we're not trying to tank or lose every game. But we're going to build it right and, and see how it plays out. Does it irritate you to hear that kind of talk out there? Or do you just kind of let it go. You have to let it go because it's I don't see how you could ask 53 guys to put their bodies on the line to lose games, you know, and it's just Well, it, it, I mean, the idea is No, I know, but that's yeah. right for the top, yeah. but it's just, you know, Steve kind of clarified that, you know, with this when we introduced Brian and and it was, you know, and you've talked about the type of players we want, tough guys, competitive guys. So I mean, it's it's kind of hard to say you want that and then say, "Hey, rain it back for a year and just go lay down so you, you know." So we'll we'll see how it goes. Chris, what, what impressed you the most about Brian Flores in the process? Uh, 
just uh, the person. I mean, take away the football part, which you know he's a really good football coach, and uh, but it's the person. And like I said, our paths never crossed in terms of being at New England at the time because I was gone and he came in after. And uh, it was just a lot of the coaches that I knew there and personnel staff all talks kept saying, "Hey, you gotta." You got to meet Brian and really talk to him football wise. And, you know, we knew each other a little bit just in the scouting world, but he hadn't been in there in 10 plus years. So, but he came in, uh, was uh, very organized, detailed, personable. Uh, he knew facts about um, everyone there was on the interview process with us. So it just this level of detail and getting to know. And then as you've been around him, just you can feel his presence, his leadership, how people respond to him, and how he treats people, and, and so that's I thought it was just exactly what we needed. He obviously comes from a very successful organization, and that's the only one he's been in. So, do you want him to try to replicate some things that went well in New England? How much do you want to embrace what they did in New England? Yeah. I, I think I want Brian to be Brian. So whatever he feels works, we're all on board for that, and and it's. Uh, bringing in good people from everywhere, like Jim Caldwell, you know, bringing some stuff from Indy, uh, you know, for personnel side, having uh, Marvin Allen and Reggie McKenzie come in, new ideas. So uh, for me, it's, it's and for Brian as well, it's just hiring good people that are really good at their jobs and just uh, taking those ideas and whatever works best for the organization will do. Chris, oh, hell, 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 Chris, I know it's one. early in the week, but what can you say about this quarterback class? And a lot of people are looking toward next year as a better one, but what do you think about this one? You'd always have to say when people start ranking classes now before anyone sat down and talked to guys, it's kind of hard to do because everyone knows the, the mental part of the game, especially for the quarterbacks, play a huge part. So um, until anyone sits down and talks to those players and gets to see how they learn football, how they process information, how they're going to be in the locker room, what kind of leadership they bring, uh, you can't really say because that's the intangibles is what makes people great. We've seen a lot of guys come through the league that have big arms and can make every throw, but if they're not wired right upstairs, they're not going to make it. So um, I don't make any judgments on any classes until we really sit down and get to know the players first. Is that that much more important? It is. That position? It than? is. It's the way defensive are, defenses are. You have to process things quicker, make quick decisions, know where to go with the ball. and. So it is, it's a huge part. And, uh, you know, and I think that's the real reason you see a lot of talented players that uh, don't quite live up to maybe their draft billing in terms of their quarterback position. All right, last What's one here. What's your, uh, your interest in bringing Cameron Wake back? Uh, right now with the roster and uh, Brian, we're going through everything. Uh, he's been a dolphin. <laughs> he's been, <laughs> been a, a tremendous player for us. And, you know, so we'll, we'll see where that is right now. And we'll have conversations with him and his agent probably soon. All right, Cameron, last one, and we're going. Chris, if I could follow up to Hal's question about what is your specific QB philosophy as part of evaluating them, and how closely do you follow Bill Parcells' <laughs> uh, mentality and his strict guidelines? It, it's the, the Bill model in terms of like a two-and-a-half-year or three-year starter. Um, that does have a lot because you want guys that have had the game reps and game experience, but – the way the game is now and these kids, a lot of these guys are like one and done, you know, where they've sat their freshman year and then something happened and they're at least getting like a one year starter or something. So I think you have to take it on a case by case basis with each player. But uh, the big thing is that right now is the intelligence and the leadership stuff. And I think that's really important because obviously all these guys can throw and uh, people want to say guys have better big arms and whatever, but the guys that quote unquote don't have great arms become good players in this league. So and what separates them is the middle makeup.